Now, to come back to Fabio's point about criticism and philology. I think, in retrospect, another reason I accepted this challenge was that as I've gone on, I've become more and more interested in philology. Because you can't really work on the early stuff without at least understanding the impact of the philological decisions that have been made. And so I sort of became a person interested in not letting philologists have that impact without people knowing about it. And sort of making what their decisions were more transparent and more available. And the Rime is an incredible opportunity for that uh, because it's a case where there are many philological decisions that have hermeneutic implications but that are not presented as such because philologists do operate a little bit like terrorists in the sense that it just is <laughs> and you don't, you don't get to argue with it. So in terms of this canzone, it has um, many ways in which we can think about the philological issues and I had to think about the philological issues and the, the discussion of the canzone starts with the philological issues um, because of its transmission, as Fabio was alluding to, the fact that it was not copied by Boccaccio in Boccaccio's uh, famous copying of 15 canzoni, which he refers to as Le canzone di Stese di Dante, and which then became the main tradition for the transmission of Dante's canzoni. But Boccaccio didn't copy this one. And as a result, it comes down to us as Dedo Perti says very poignantly, just on the manuscripts of the fingers of one hand, whereas the Canzoni di Stese, hundreds and hundreds of manuscripts. So there's that entire issue. And then it also was a poem that required me to address, which I don't do in a, well, the question of the order of, the, of these poems. And the question of the order of these poems uh, is a complex one because Dante did not make an order. So the editor must make an order. And it's a question that became more complex recently because Domenico De Robertis, after working on his edition for 60 years, came out with the idea that his order was going to be no longer the attempt to reconstruct a life chronologically as Barbie had done, but rather faithful to the philology, these are De Robertis' words, the philology of the ancient manuscripts. And in the ancient manuscripts, Boccaccio's canzoni di Stese come first in the order in which Boccaccio put them. So that if you, when you pick up De Robertis' edition now, which came out first in 2002, and then in the briefer version of one massive volume rather than five massive volumes, in 2005, when you pick it up, the first poem you see is one of the Rime Petrose, um, because Boccaccio put that first. Yet, we know, because the Rime Petrose, we don't have dates for all these poems. It, many times it's conjectural. But the Rime Petrose, we do, because there is an astronomical periphrasis that dates it to December of 1296. So to start an edition, it's, it just, it's really almost painful to pick it up and see a poem that is later preceding, coming before a poem like this that was written so much earlier. And it's basically throwing away the opportunity for the reader to see something about how Dante developed. So that's something that I, so because Boccaccio didn't copy it, Lo Doloroso Amor is put by De Robertis 16th after all of the ones that Boccaccio copied. So it sort of got excluded again, actually, in a different way, though it is actually there. So this is a poem that I created because one is creating a fictional order, and I'm always transparent about it. But here I created an arc. I put lo, um, three poems in a row, lo doloroso, three canzoni, Lo Doloroso Amor, Aiming Cresce di Me, and Donne Che Avete Intelletto d'Amore. They were written about the same time, but we don't have dates. But one is the prototypical canzone of what is the Dolce Stil Nuovo according to Dante in Purgatorio 24. 
and the other two written at about the same time, give us the path that had Dante followed it, he would have written an oxymoron, which would have been a Cavalcantian Vita Nuova, a Vita Nuova that wasn't about life, but about death. And so I tried to take opportunities always to allow the reader to see that Dante's path was fraught. His path was, was um, he was struggling. He was struggling with ideas as well as with language. And at the time that he wrote Lo Doloroso Amor and E Min Cresce di Me, he was very much um, subendo il fascino di Guido Cavalcanti. And that, um, that tragic sense of love, not in a melodramatic sense of tragic, simply in the sense that love is not something salvific, but that love, in fact, as Guido says, uh, so simply in Donna Me Prega, uh, segue spesso morte, from love, death frequently will follow. That, that sense is what pervades these, these canzoni that were written con really right about the same time as, as Donne Chiavete. So that was something I wanted to, to find a way to, to reconstruct and, and to show. And all of the, all of the readings are always um, trying to work with other poems in terms of creating a, a dialogic sense of what the path is. <laughs> 